All right. Hello, everyone. This is Lisa with IVF Manifesting a Miracle. And um, today we will be talking with a dear friend of mine, a soul sister, Shaylin Christensen. Hi, Shaylin. Hi. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You call me Shay, don't you? Right? You call me Shay? Shay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you can address me like that to everybody. That's fine. Oh, well, I'm so yeah. I'm I'm so excited though to be here. Thank you for chat with you joining me for a soul sister conversation. So yeah, you know, per I'm, usual, <laughs> the infertility community, the women I'm serving, and um, although you haven't gone through infertility struggles yourself, you know you became a mom pretty early on, at the age of 20, and then had a, another child um, just a couple years ago, and. Um, one thing, you know, I just really admire about you is you have this like old, old soul about you. You, you have this quality. Um, and I know it's even grown stronger since you've had your little girl, Lila. Um, oh, yes. What about, mm -hmm. you know, yourself and kind of your journey in, in becoming a mom? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, I'd love to. Um, and I want to take it a little bit back. Lisa, I don't know if you know this about me, but I began watching little kids and getting paid for it when I was like eight <laughs> with my sister. And then when I was 11, um, I was getting like paid like 20 bucks an hour to watch toddlers. I've just always had a knack for littles. And then life circumstances would bring me to <laughs> things happen. And I basically kind of became my own mom when I was about 11. I lost my mom to circumstances and mm -hmm. lost her as a role in my life. So then I got to cherry pick and kind of decide what I wanted motherhood to look like for me. So this motherhood journey has been long. I've been reparenting myself for a long time and I started a lot earlier than a lot of other people do. Mm -hmm. And so fast forward to 19 and pregnant, barely just missed that MTV cutoff for their TV show, darn it. <laughs> Although because of my youthful appearance, people challenged me on that. And, <laughs> you know, and I was, I was determined to have, to like have this wonderful experience of motherhood, but more importantly, to raise a beautiful human despite my age and despite what other people said, because mm -hmm. people were not kind to me. I would literally, there's times I like stuck my hand out to shake people's hands and they wouldn't shake my hand because they were maybe in their forties with the same age kid as me. And I was looked at as like less than, so I don't know that just like feeling inferior as a mom, it gave me this soft spot mm. that opened me up to that land. Like turns out every mom feels that <laughs> who knew <laughs> but for their own unique reason, right? There's this like inferiority and part of that comes from just being a woman, but then you add the responsibility of motherhood and it, it just opens up this big Pandora's box that was highlighted for me at a young age because I was young. Yeah. And maybe if you know me, I use pain points. You wanted me to bring this up, a quote, it's tattooed on my leg. Scars or souvenirs will never lose. Say that again. For everybody scars our souvenirs will never lose and I didn't know that was tattooed on your leg <laughs> yes it's a giant tattoo on my leg <laughs> we learn but you know when I read that it it kind of struck me because women who are going through infertility challenges I mean there's a definite scar there it's you have physical scars from a lot of your procedures shots all that Mm -hmm. but the emotional scar, um, kind of, it always stays with you. And I, I really believe, you know, we've earned those scars. We've, they're part of us. They're part of you forever. Right. Right. And, and then the next question is, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. For me, I turned it into a beautiful decade of motherhood that my son is, <laughs> He's an exceptional human being. Mm. He's 11 and he's exceptional and he's, he's been so easy. He hasn't talked back to me in six years. And so like, I don't do discipline issues. I don't have any issues. And for me, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There's, there, there's a part of my human side that feels good that all those people, my family and pe 
other like people in my community who mm-hmm. didn't think I could do it because I was 19. Guess whose kids behave better than yours? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Guess whose kid respects them more than yours do? Yeah. So I might have been 20, but I wasn't messing around. That little boy means the world to me. Yeah. You, you have such... So, yeah. I just, like, I took, I took the scars and I turned them into souvenirs that I could gift my child with. That's amazing. <laughs> and there's, that's, that, that right there, if, if anyone gets anything from this talk, I think it should be that. But that's, that's what you do with your scars that you got from this journey. For sure. You turn them into souvenirs that you're going to gift your child mm-hmm. and your family. And I think these, um, gosh, how do I say it? But I mean, just when I met you, it was about 2015 and we met through a women's group, a really awesome book club that I wish yes. was going on. Um, we were reading personal development books and met through socials. And I was just kind of at the start of our fertility challenges and you were just really impressed me and kind of, you know, we became friends pretty quickly and you helped me get in that space of trust, trusting this was all going to work Mm -hmm. out. And like, why would it be any different? Why would it not work out? And I just remember kind of hanging out in my backyard and having that conversation with you or talking on the phone and, and you just kind of snapped it into me. Like, oh shoot. Are you there? I'm here. Not a call and I don't (laughs) know. back on the zoom that's oh, okay i'll wait here here for you. i apologize <laughs> life it's okay. um, but you you help me just really get in that space of trust believe believing this is this is all going to work out i believe at the time when we talked i had one embryo waiting for us and we only the whole time had one healthy embryo and mm-hmm. um, i just really am grateful to you for kind of opening my eyes to mm. the picture of that you know so you're welcome. <laughs> you was... talked, you know, about seasons and this is a season actually we're in, I would say, maybe you would agree with uh, this uh, coronavirus and a lot of people are experiencing the darkness and others are choosing to focus on the light and what the gifts maybe are in this time period. Um, for a lot of women who are struggling through this period of darkness, you know, can you kind of speak a little bit about this being a season and maybe what it means to you? Yeah, 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 sure. That's um, something. So I had my son at 20, fast forward. I have, I get pregnant with my daughter at 27 and I'm like, I went from ear from like ignorant to spirit junkie mom in about five, six years. <laughs> Yeah, you are. Anybody that <laughs> look up Shayla at spiritjunkymom.com. <laughs> and you can figure out what that means for yourself. But um, talk more about that a little bit. But yeah. <laughs> so a lot changed. And something that I embraced is this idea and realization of like our society drives this linear plane that we just like are supposed to go, 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 go in abundance and have everything all the like everything is all the time right now linear. And that's look around. That's not how the planet we live on works. Everything in nature works on a cycle. Everything. Except the humans like trying, like we're trying to like literally defy nature (laughs) by not acknowledging that we live in seasons. And so there's, there's societal, there's world. And then even on an individual level, there's seasons. And for women, as we know, we're on monthly cycles. Right. But it's not like that doesn't, I was taught that just meant like I bled once a month and it sucked and it's embarrassing and and it's kind of shameful. That's what I was programmed with. Mm -hmm. And also when I look around, that's the program that I see and that's being like reflected back towards me when it's the exact opposite. There's so much more and to just wrap it up quick, there's, there's a spring, summer, fall, and winter. Us women experience all four seasons in one month. The winter is when the bleed would happen. So for women and women that don't bleed for whatever reason, you still go through winter. Mm -hmm. Like your hormones still change. (laughs) You're just dealing with a different level of hormones now. Right. But we still need to acknowledge that there's, there's a time for rest. There's a time for harvest. There's a time for all these things. Right now, (laughs) 
And it's like, what season do you want to decide it is for you? Yeah, I mean, it's like, and men actually, I've heard this, men, the masculine operates on a 24-hour cycle. Interesting. That's why they can ditch things quicker hmm. on multiple levels. We stew on things a bit longer as women <laughs> because, and, and because our bodies are magical and they were made to have babies. And that's the cycle that needs to happen in order for the womb. So, yeah. And I wanted to talk um, about yeah. energy, you know, that magical quality. Um, we, we want to get in that space of. I hear, I hear little footsteps. Can we pause a minute? Yep, I'll pause it. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> um, no, but we're talking about the feminine energy and you you live this in the way you live your life you know really tapping mm. feminine can you kind of share with women who you know maybe in this struggling period of the waiting and and kind of this dark period where a lot of their cycles have been canceled i know you haven't been through infertility but right, but a lot of insight and advice on how we can like tap into that energy of the feminine sure yeah i mean there's still um I imagine there's a process to all of the infertility, right? And there's, right. there's a process to everything. And it's like almost all of us, the one thing we have in common is like, we've kind of been told that a lot of our processes have to be on hold. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's really illuminated the things that we don't have control over, which is kind of terrifying. Yeah. So what can be empowering is with that illuminated, we can also see what we have control of. Exactly. We have control over our thoughts and people, I mean, this is coming from someone I've recovered from depression twice and I will preach this forever. We can choose our thoughts and we can choose our feelings and we can choose our state of being. Yes. Amen. To Sometimes that. we have to do it moment to moment. Not day by day, but like some people, and I get it right now, some people have to go moment to moment. Very true. And there was moments even for me, like, I'm kind of, I feel like a spring chicken right now. <laughs> like even before all this stuff erupted, I was coming out of my own winter and we are coming out of physical winter mm -hmm. into physical spring, into like a spring within myself that, um, yeah, at first I like kind of felt like then I got put on hold. But I was like, no, no, no. What are things I have control over? Like they can't put my relationships on hold. They can't put my, you know, my um, my practices, my rituals. Like there's so yep. many things they can't put my learning on hold. You know, so for a lot of women right now, what the theme is, is hope. You can't put hope. I mean, hope does not go on hold. You, you always will have that hope. Um, and that's another, I, I, I have a hope tattoo as well. You yeah. do? That's yeah, it's, it's actually, um, for those that don't know, the Superman symbol yeah. is actually, um, it's a symbol for hope on planet Krypton is actually what that symbol means Whoa. and so I have that tattooed on my back and above it says somebody's hero and that's like a thing between my brother and I that's very cool yeah but just yeah just a stamp of like being committed to bringing hope to humanity and we have control over that and um yeah that's we gotta focus on what we do have control over exactly Ooh. mental emotional confidence and communication those were four pillars of like skills that I recently learned like four things that I can control and that I can contribute to hmm. regardless of what season I'm in of life my mental body my emotional my confidence and my communication skills love that thank you for sharing so yeah well, you're speaking my language. I, I believe there are so many things we can control in this process when things feel out of our control and you're exactly right, like tapping into the mental, the spiritual. Um, it, there's a lot more that we can control. 
Um, yeah. Something you and I have chatted about is letting go of resistance. Mm. And, um, I'd love to hear your reflect, re reflections on that and kind of breaking down the walls of resistance and how it applies yeah. to your life. I say what, well, <laughs> okay. How it applies to my life daily, my word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I want to bring up how, I don't know, my discovery of resistance in the IVF world, yeah. potentially, that it feels like a sensitive subject because there's, there's still like so much about that world that doesn't make sense to me because it's a blend of like, I feel like nature and science and yeah, I don't know. And each circumstance is unique and I would hate to throw a blanket over it and be like, that covers it all, you know? So I don't mean that, but at least I had shared with you that since I was a teenager, it's, it always blew my mind <laughs> that there were these perfectly capable, wonderful people out there wanting to have babies and they couldn't. Mm -hmm. They were having to either adopt or go through mm -hmm. the IVF. Mm -hmm. And then at the very same time, there's legit women in prison, high on heroin, giving birth. I have chills. It still blows mm -hmm. my mind. <laughs> so I just like, yeah. I need to like give that like, it blows my mind still. And I have a theory. <laughs> it's the only thing that can remotely make any sense of that okay. to me. Okay. And it's that the women who are going through IVF or adoption have been told by white coats, and I'm calling them that because we give doctors a lot of power. We give people in white coats a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when they say your body can't do this, people take a white coat's word over God's. And they believe that their body, can, so there's, who knows what people have been told their whole lives about what they're capable of or not. Right. Beliefs are a big foundational. But in this instance, people have been told that they can't have babies. My mom was told she couldn't either. There's three of us. I don't know how it all works. <laughs> I don't know. But what I do know is that the women who are on heroin in jail don't have any resistance <laughs> about having a baby. They're not even thinking about it. They haven't been programmed that their body can't have a, they haven't been told that. It's not even on their radar, which means if it's not on their radar, there's no resistance. They're not constantly drumming, I can't have a baby. I can't have a baby. What's wrong with me? I can't have a baby. You will create what you think about and if you are constantly thinking about I can't create a baby you won't yeah that goes for baby money love all of it mm -hmm. you won't because you won't allow yourself to exactly. free will we are gifted it you're welcome happy birthday <sighs> <laughs> and I think you know some people may think God the source the universe it's that spiritual element right mm-hmm Tapping into yeah. um, letting those walls of resistance down and just having faith and yeah, knowing letting... that wherever you're at now can lead you to a baby. So if that's in the middle of a paused IVF journey, because we're in the middle of a coronavirus, never happened before pandemic, <sighs> give yourself a little grace. Exactly. Give the whole system a little grace and know that it can still happen and that pathway is still possible for you exactly no thanks for sharing your reflections on that um, yeah I, again i was i i get a little scared too because i don't like i don't want to step on toes but i also feel like it needs to be said <laughs> no i know there's there can be a lot of um frustration and i felt it too going through you know infertility challenges like why everyone around me is getting pregnant or why is it so easy for them and you know women wait longer or maybe you wait till you find the right partner um oh yeah and then established in your career when you're ready and then why like why was that so hard yeah so mm -hmm. i can relate to feeling kind of that first yeah. you know, like how easy it is for some other women and i do think there is an element to to kind of um the the thoughts we're thinking for sure you know and feeling empowered 
through this ride, <laughs> trying to stay, stay in that yeah. full place and keep moving. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, I love your website name, spiritjunkymom.com. And I think it was <laughs> yeah, thank by, you. by Gabrielle Bernstein. You and I both really oh, appreciate her yes. and uh, like her. Um, her work and, you know, I read the universe has your back. Her book was really powerful. I was reading that during IVF and. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, cool. I just, um, and she, she too has had her own fertility challenges. I'm sure you are aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. She was like her own greatest testimony because she had already had the books out and had thousands of followers and all this stuff. And then she realized like, Oh, I'm so resistant to having a baby. <laughs> I was being so controlling. I was being so. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> then even Gabby B gets blind spots, you know, <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then yeah, the she has a really cool story. Yeah. And the work you're doing now, um, I know you used to have a podcast, Changing the Conversation, and that was pretty powerful. And yeah, that was. New projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fun project to do while I was like pregnant and stuff, and I didn't want to be on video, honestly, right. that much. I feel like pressure too. And so um, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I shifted towards YouTube and doing the vlog thing. And I've been having a lot of fun, like editing the videos and adding music. And with my podcast, I never edited it, I just uploaded it and shared it. And so that was like fun. But yeah, and something I found on your website, you have like a soulful, um, what did you call it? Like a Spotify music playlist to get you in that. Yeah, yes. So that's like Spirit Junkie. I think it's just Spirit Junkie playlist. But yeah, it's it's at spiritjunkiemom.com, Spotify playlist. And I just, I love, <laughs> again, I'm going to say this without trying to step on toes. We'll see. I love worship music, except I don't, no, no. I love Christian music. Worship music is like real Jesus-y, and I don't like that. I have a very unique mm -hmm. personal relationship with Jesus, and it's not the kind that requires me to like almost chant his name through music or right. anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like Christian music, but not too Jesus-y. <laughs> no, I love it. And just <laughs> always like can get me like, yeah, just feeling like activated and I can dance to it and I feel empowered. And I feel worthy and I feel like a loved child of source. And so that's, that's what I've been listening to. Yeah. yeah, every day for the last three years, I danced my baby to those songs and I was mm -hmm. pregnant. Like, again, the programming and what we're listening to. And yeah. Yeah. Well, I love you as a soul. Thank, yes. Like, thank you. Just have really enriched my life. And I'm so grateful. Like, our daughters are so close in age. And um, yeah, that virtue. Virtual play dates are a thing. It's yes. fun. I love yeah. it. I think we need to keep continuing that. I mean, <laughs> who knows how long this will go on for as far as the virus. But right, but squeeze one more in. We can connect in a lot of different ways. And so for women, yeah, totally. extra support, you know, I just want to let everyone know that I'm, I'm here as a support to you and we'll do more soul sister conversations as well as the clinical conversations I do with my fertility doctor and uh, message me at um, lisa at ivfmanifestingamiracle.com. I uh, have a YouTube channel there and, um, well, yeah, Instagram, just kind of all the links there. But uh, yeah, here to support you and Shaylin, I just love you. Yes, thank you so much for having me, for doing what you do. I love, I love the combination that you provide thank for you. women going through IVF. It's unique and needed. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. All Keep right. it coming. We'll talk soon. I love you. Okay. Love you. Bye. Bye.